Hello and welcome to another opportunity to attract the man of your dreams. Or today, to avoid the man of your worst nightmares. Today I want to share the most important red flags with you that you have to look out for in men. And it all starts on your very first date and that's a red flag that so many of my Skype coaching clients didn't even think about before they entered relationships with men who clearly had an alcohol issue. If you're on a date with a guy and he drinks more than one beer on your first date, be aware. Even if he drinks one beer, for example, in the afternoon or when you meet him, for example, at lunchtime, that's already, yeah, it doesn't have to be a red flag, but it can be a red flag. In fact, a lot of the women who I've coached, who I've helped to overcome past trauma, who I've helped to get over guys who were terrible for them and who I've helped to find way better men and to find love. A lot of these women who struggled with getting over men who were abusive and who were also abusive because of alcohol were able to think back to the first date and they clearly saw that on the first date he was drinking one beer, then maybe a whiskey, then maybe another beer. But because when you're then in a situation you think, ah, oh, you know, he just wants to have fun, ah, oh, he wants to enjoy the evening with me, it's not a big deal. Well, it doesn't have to be a big deal, but it can be a big deal. Be very careful with men who are drinking a lot of alcohol because these men are usually not the most ambitious, not the kindest, and often the most abusive. Not always, but it can be a red flag. And if he tries to compete with you when you share your accomplishments, that's also a red flag you should look out for. For example, if you simply tell him, yeah, you know, I work in a management position in this bank, and he immediately switches the topic to himself, and he gets irritated when you share your success, this is the kind of guy who's very insecure and who doesn't want his girlfriend or wife to be successful in any way, and that's a red flag. This guy, you don't want to date him because this guy has so many insecurities that he has to deal with. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't mean that you, for example, say, hey, you know, I work as a manager and you are nothing. You are nothing. That's not what I'm talking about. I just mean when you really, in a generous, in a nice, in a friendly way, tell him, hey, you know, I work in this management position at this bank or hey, I have my own business. And a man who's really secure in himself, a man who wants his girlfriend to achieve something, this man would be encouraging. He would say, wow, that's great, awesome. What are you doing there? He will ask you questions. But a very insecure man and a narcissistic man who doesn't want his girlfriend to even get close to his level or let's say the level that he imagines in his mind that he's at, this man will react irritated and maybe even aggressive. And he definitely will switch the topic. Another very obvious red flag is when he pressures you to jump in bed with him. And here, be very careful, I want to combine this point with the next point I want to mention, if he tries to get you drunk. Be very careful with these guys. I mean, I don't want you to have a bad experience, I don't want you to be traumatized, and in case you've had a traumatic experience with a man in the past, I don't want you to re-experience that, or to make an experience that's even worse. Yes, not all men out there are good men. I can't say it any other way. I mean, both when it comes to women and both when it comes to men, they are good people and they are bad people. And you have to be aware of the bad people. And when it comes to men, you have to be especially aware because men are, well, mostly physically stronger than you. And if you allow him to get you drunk and you then also have the combination of him trying to pressure you to jump in bed with him, this can result in a very, very dangerous cocktail. So be very careful with that whenever a man pressures you to jump in bed with him. This is not the kind of guy you want to date in a long-term relationship. In fact, this man most likely doesn't want a relationship at all. I mean, don't get me wrong, if he, for example, invites you to his place and you then politely decline and he respects that, that's totally okay. But if he then continues to pressure you and he tries to continue to convince you, maybe even in a physical way, then you have been warned, then you should immediately end this date. And if he love bombs you, that's also a very dangerous subject and that's actually something that I've experienced a lot with my coaching clients who've been in abusive relationships with narcissists. Narcissists are extremely good in the first date or second date to tell you that, oh, you are the woman of my dreams, oh, I will spend the rest of my life with you. They are love bombing, love bombing, love bombing. And then you might think, oh my god, I found the man of my dreams. But always remember that love is a feeling that slowly has to develop. I truly believe that what people often describe as love at first sight 
is most of the time lust at first sight. I don't say that there can't be any, yeah, any situations where you see somebody and you're immediately in love. That might happen, but most of the time it's lust at first sight. And if a guy tries to love bomb you from the get go and he makes you believe that you are the woman of his dreams, even though he doesn't know anything about you, he doesn't know your characteristics, he doesn't know your personality, he doesn't know anything, then you have been warned. And if this man is in any way, shape or form rude, even if he's the nicest and friendliest guy when he's with you, but if he then acts rude, for example, when the waitress brings the wrong order, instead of simply saying, um, sorry, I ordered this meal instead of that meal, could you please change that? That's a friendly way of interacting in this situation. But if this guy gets rude, he gets aggressive, maybe even physically aggressive in the sense that he punches with his fist on the table, for example, then you have to be warned because he might act all friendly and all calm with you. But then with the other person, he shows his true colors. And if he talks bad about other women in his life, that's also a clear red flag. If he, for example, talks about all his ex-girlfriends, I mean, that's a really, really, really strong red flag. If he, for example, says, oh, you know, all my three ex-girlfriends were terrible. Oh, they just treated me like, ooh, like dirt. And oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I mean, there are two things to that. Maybe it's even true. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's true. Maybe there's a 1% chance that all his ex-girlfriends were terrible human beings, which I don't believe. But let's just assume for the sake of the argument that it's true. In this case, why did he stay with them? Why did he attract them in the first place? What does that say about his boundaries? What does it say about his level of self-love? But most likely in 99% of the cases, that's not even true, but he just blames his ex-girlfriends for everything, even though he might be to blame for 50% or maybe even 90% of what happened. So be careful with that. It's always a good sign when a guy, for example, says, I'm still friends with my ex-girlfriend, um, it didn't work out for that reason or that reason, but everything is okay with us. That's always a very good sign, and that's the kind of guy that you want. That's the kind of guy who can also end a relationship in a healthy way and who's not angry, who's not embittered and who's not resentful. That's the kind of man who you want to date. And if you want to be able to make such a man devoted to you, then you can click on the first link in the description or go to gethimkeephim.com slash devoted. Watch this video till the very end and then you can decide for yourself if you want to invest in the devotion sequence, which in my opinion is the best program I've ever tested if you want to make a man devoted to you. And he has a terrible relationship with his mother. I mean, yes, if there are good reasons why he has a terrible relationship with his mother, then it might not be a red flag. For example, if he's been raised by a narcissistic mother, then you can understand it. If you can see that this man is very kind, he has an open heart, he's very emotionally available, then you can say, okay, it's not a red flag. It just can be a red flag. If, for example, he talks very bad about his mother, even though there's no real reason, or let's say you don't see any real reason why that should be the case, then you should be careful. And especially if also his three sisters are all terrible human beings in his eyes, that's also a clear red flag. Because something smells fishy. And he doesn't respect your decision to not kiss him yet. I mean, let's face it, if you're, for example, on a date with a man, you're attracted to him, at some point, you probably want him to kiss you. But what if you clearly communicate with your body language and maybe even with your words directly that you do not want him to kiss you, but he still tries it and he still tries it again and again? That's a clear red flag. This means this man doesn't respect your boundaries. And if he doesn't respect your boundaries now on the first date, then he won't respect your boundaries later on if you would be dating him. And the next sign is when he gets aggressive. Whenever you're with a man who gets aggressive, no matter what it might be, then this can be a red flag. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're, for example, getting attacked by two people who want to rob you and he then defends you, that's a completely different story. But if he gets aggressive for no reason whatsoever and you can see it in his eyes, you can see it how his body language changes, especially when it comes to you being at his place or you going to his place, and you, for example, have some doubt. You, yeah, you have some moments where you think, ah, should I really do it or not? And you can see that this irritates him, that he gets aggressive when you stop in the middle of the way, for example. That's a clear red flag. And he has children with multiple women. If he's, for example, a single dad and he's been married for 20 years and the marriage didn't work out for reasons that are completely understandable, 
then I don't think it's a red flag. Because hey, you might also be a single mom listening now and you also want to find love. That's also not a red flag. But what if, extreme example again, what if he has four children from four different women? Well, he might not be the best guy when it comes to commitment and parental investment. You don't want to be number five. And he can't keep a job if his life depends on it. That's also a clear red flag. You want to date an ambitious guy. You want to date a man who wants to achieve something in life and also a man who has at least achieved something already or who's on the path to success. You don't want to date a loser who's just watching TV or playing video games all day long. No woman who loves herself and respects herself would date such a guy. And speaking of that, he's still living with his parents. I mean, now we have to distinguish, of course. If he's a broke college student and he's 21 years old or 20 years old and he's still living with his parents, then you can say, okay, it's not a big deal. When I was 18, 19, I was also still living with my parents. I think if I remember correctly, I moved out with 20. Yeah, I think I was 20 when I moved out. That's a different ball game than, for example, when you meet a guy who's in his late 30s or even early 30s and he's still living with his parents. These are completely different situations. A guy who's over 30 and still living with his parents, that's a red flag. And his Tinder or online dating profile screams player. This is also a red flag that for some reason, and I mean, now I have to mention what I mentioned before with falling in lust instead of falling in love. That's a red flag that some of my Skype coaching clients ignored and then they ended up with broken hearts. But if a man, and I want to be really clear right now, if a man shows himself on an online dating site or on Tinder, shirtless, with his six-pack apps, this is a sign, player, player, player. Even if he writes in the profile, and now I have to be very direct, even if he writes in the profile, not looking for one-night stands, I want a committed relationship. Do not believe it. I'm speaking from experience here. I've coached so many women who fell for that trick. You should not be the next woman who falls for that trick. If a man, I have to really say it like this, if a man shows himself with no clothes on his body, if he shows his muscles on the online dating site or the hookup app, and yes, Tinder is a hookup app, then he's not looking for a relationship. At least I'm 99.9% .9 sure. Maybe you will prove me wrong with the one guy who shows himself shirtless and he's actually looking for a relationship, but in my experience, that's not the case. And the last red flag that I want to share with you is when your gut feeling doesn't go away. Yes, you might be attracted to him. Yes, you might already be in the process of falling in lust, but not falling in love. You might really want to be with that guy. There's something adventurous about him. There's something where you say, wow, that guy has something. Wow, that guy is interesting. That guy is adventurous. That guy is, yeah, maybe he even has these bad boy qualities that you were attracted to in the past, but you already know in which direction it will lead you. And when your gut feeling tells you, don't do it, don't make the same mistake again, just don't do it, then listen to your gut. Because your gut usually knows if a guy is good for you or bad for you. It's just that we often get blinded by looks, we get blinded by accomplishments, we get blinded by the person that this person tries to sell us. I mean, maybe they're not really that way, but they sell themselves in a good way. And we get blinded by that, but our gut knows what's going on. And if there's a specific guy in your mind where you say, I don't know if he has all of these red flags or any of these red flags, if he's a good man, if he's a bad man, then why don't you tell me about him? Let me know how he behaved on your last date. Let me know what he texts you. And I will then make sure that you don't end up in a relationship with a man who will ruin your life. If you want to work with me, then you can click on the second link in the description or you can go to gethimkeephim.com slash Skype. And if you enjoyed watching this video, if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section below. Share your opinion, share your thoughts. I would love to hear from you. And I would love it even more if you would hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell so that you get notified whenever I release a new video for you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video.